Today we are joined via Skype by Richard Garagosian. He's the director of Independent Think Tank Regional Study Centre in Yerevan, Armenia. Thank you for joining us, Richard. Uh, despite a widespread anti-government protest last month, the Republican-controlled Armenian parliament voted down opposition leader Nikol Pashinyan's bid for premiership. Uh, what are the chances of Pashinyan being elected tomorrow? Well, good question. Unlike the first ballot where, in an act of desperation, the ruling Republican Party obstructed the vote, we do expect the opposition leader Pashinyan to secure sufficient number of votes and support to actually become Armenia's next prime minister. If he isn't voted in, what can we expect? Well, if we will expect an acceleration in terms of a process leading to an extraordinary snap election. In other words, this is a crisis of confidence. But in many ways, he is widely expected to secure passage as the premier. However, his first immediate goal is to position the country for immediate elections. And if he is voted in, what is the process that will follow after that? Well, interestingly, unlike the forced resignation of the former president, this is the harder part because there is a legislative challenge and necessity for reforming the electoral law to allow a free and fair election, which Armenia has not had for several years. Okay. And we know that Pashinyan's big platforms have been free and fair elections. Do we know anything else about his political program? Yes, in many ways he represents not so much the geopolitical battle between West and Russia, but in terms of cleaning house internally. It's very much a domestic agenda. Anti-corruption is a primary focus and priority. And interestingly, there are several lessons learned both from Georgia and their experience and Ukraine in terms of the Euromaidan, in terms of how can we ensure that reform only deepens and accelerates and avoiding risks of retreat. What is the political mood uh, in Armenia right now? Uh, previously, the Republican Party has said, you know, previously the Republican Party has voted down Pashinyan's bid for premiership. Uh, have there been any deals or negotiations since then? Well, not so much deals, but a recognition by even the outgoing ruling Republican Party that Armenia has a distinctly new political reality. And the ruling party has been in power for over a decade, is deeply unpopular. So in many ways, there's a sign that the new political reality has already moved on. What's most significant, however, is this is not yet a revolution. It was the forced resignation of an incumbent leader. But a revolution implies systemic change that is now only beginning. Mm -hmm. And have any influential politicians come to Pashinyan's side? Well, many. In, in many cases, what we see is since his election to parliament last year, he was part of a three-party opposition coalition. In other words, this movement is much bigger than any one individual. It represents the promise of institutional change. And every political party every day is sensing the mood and the shift and therefore is increasingly gravitating toward this opposition movement. And we do hope to imitate Georgia in terms of a peaceful precedent of a transfer of power. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest issues with the, the Republicans Party's rule has been the uh, concerns about free and fair elections, which, as you mentioned, Armenia hasn't had for a long time. What kind of changes need to be brought into the electoral code for uh, free and fair elections to take place? Well, first is the lesson from the post-Soviet space, whether it's Kiev or whether it's Yerevan. The challenge of the natural advantage of incumbency, in other words, so-called administrative resources, where a ruling party has long been able to use the power of incumbency in terms of forcing people to vote for them as civil service workers, hospital workers, etc. We need a more level playing field and we need to actually combat corruption in the electoral sense. 
But the popular mood on the street and among the ordinary citizens is not to miss this opportunity for a credible free and fair election. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, uh, after if, if Pashinyan is elected tomorrow, the parliament will be dissolved. Can you explain what, can you sort of explain what that means and, and what actually will happen on the ground? Yes, what that means in practical terms yes. is many of the Republican Party being in power for over a decade still have at their disposal directors of hospitals, school principals, civil service workers to both pressure and to persuade. But what's different, however, is two significant factors. First is the ruling party is very much a party of the past and is deeply unpopular. And secondly, they lack the financial resources in terms of the corruption pie necessary to either finance the patronage network or literally lack the money to buy votes. So inherently, we do see a more level playing field going in.